What are the main contributors to the good results of Berkshire Hathaway? I'm going to tell you all about that. After what happened? Well, what happened? What happened? Nothing and everything. Yes. Because nothing, uh, markets are more or less at the same level as and last week's uh, update. But in the meantime, everything happened. Uh, Friday, it was the option expiration, of course. Exactly. So we always warn or at least advise for specific movements in the markets. And it happened also last Friday. So actually, the markets closed around 1% from the highest points. Uh, and then Monday, it was a very red day with markets down 1%. Yes. Intraday, 1.5%. So uh, that's more or less 2.5% yeah. in one. And a lot of, of long-term trends were broken. Eh? The DAX index yeah. broke the long-term trend. So we really thought this was like this. Yeah, this thought like over. we have thought a lot of times. No, but is this a, maybe a, a the sign of a real correction? But yeah, I mean, there were some negative uh, reasons, of mm. course, the, the oil price was down, there were some COVID uh, bad news regarding yeah. the new cases and the restrictions. And, the, and these cases are higher now, so that is not the reason that's, the market went no, down. No, exactly. But otherwise it would have been down even more today. But, um, exactly. But I said, maybe it's like the mix of things, no? Like yeah. if, if, every, if there's one bad thing nowadays, well, okay, or two, but like the oil price and COVID and uh, maybe the inflation, like those exactly. kind of things, if that comes together, markets seem to be a little bit panicked, but it was wiped away the wiped losses. Wiped away in less than a day, yeah. Yeah, because of the company results, maybe, yeah. yeah because More of the results and also yesterday ECB, yeah. ECB, uh, exactly. They said they were going to be accommodating for um, for a longer term. They want to really destroy unemployment, which is in some countries in the European Union, of course, still very high. Um, and and also, what what was very clear, she said, said, the target is not to defend, to defeat. Uh, or at least get it up to the two percent levels, and yeah. and um, yeah, for that they're going to continue buying these huge amounts of of government debt, and, and God knows what they are buying. Last week only they bought for twenty two billion uh, euros of assets, and and I mean that those are humongous amounts. I read in the newspaper also today that in the US they gave out again uh, the stimulus uh, package of um, I think uh, the average American is receiving fourteen hundred dollars again, and it's literally the check that you receive in the post, which allows you to um, to go and spend. Um, also, the German economy uh, economy really uh, recovered strongly in July again. So it's a combination of a lot of macro, economical, and also company figures that were really good that made that the market recover. Really recover yeah, yeah, exactly. ASML, for example, yeah. good results, and in the touch index, that's uh, quite important if it's. Uh, it's absolutely absolutely funny again that ASML and then you look at Intel in the US, they didn't, I mean there's a lack of chips but they didn't benefit from it in no. any way. So it's, that's, yeah, uh, it's that's interesting. Great. Yeah. Not only good results, I mean uh, Unilever, it's, maybe the results were not that bad but uh, the share lost 5%, 5 yesterday yeah. so that's also an important result. Today Signify also down 8% I think. So. Like we said, if uh, even the, the, the results are not that good of the companies, like the ECB having uh, covering the, the problems, then markets seem to be uh, okay with them, and we are at new highs around it. Eh? So uh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. The, the losses of last week and beginning of this week uh, are totally uh, compensated. So yeah, nothing happened, and a lot happened. No. What's hot? So I think Warren Buffett, he, profit, he benefited a lot from this recovery. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, because he didn't sell his shares last year, or maybe some of them, but not the main drivers of his portfolio. No? Mm -hmm. um, and we always get the question, what should we do? I mean, if you look at what, he, what this man performed over the last 56 years, it's a 20% average annual return on his investments. So if you accumulate that from the initial investment of, let's say, $100, you would have made 3.4 million percent in 56 years, so it's it's a tremendous uh, uh, profitability, of course. Yeah. And um, we know that Buffett is not a big fan of diversifying his investments. So the main drivers at this moment, he has an unrealized profit. I mean, it obviously changes constantly, but of 206 uh, billion on his investment portfolio. That is, 206 billion dollars is is net profit that is accumulated on his investments. And the main drivers is Apple. Why? Because he has 907 million shares on an average price of 34.26, which
we know the price now is about 150 dollars so and why does he keep the, uh, apple maybe because of the reason that it's a main uh, contributor to um, uh, because apple in the you know, sorry i have to say that properly apple is um in his eyes very good for the shareholders so they they the dividend they buy back shares or they do a split or whatever you know all those sorts of things Bank of America, one of his favorites, he thinks that Bank of America will benefit a lot when there's a rate hike of the Fed. Um, $14.17 average, price is now approximately 40. Very important, of course, we have American Express. American Express is an extremely important driver for him as well. And he keeps that, he accumulated the shares over a period of 28 years, an average price of $8.49. And in his eyes, American Express is better than MasterCard or Visa because they have better clients. When, when, when uh, there is a financial crisis, MasterCard and Visa are suffering a lot more to recuperate the credits that they facilitated to the clients. Coca-Cola, another exciting stock, but it is for Warren Buffett because he has them on an average price of $3.25 and he's making only on the dividend 50% on a yearly basis, so that's tremendous. Moody's, average price in Golden for $10.05 and exactly the same story as with Coca-Cola. He makes 25% only on the dividend on a yearly basis based on his historical uh, purchase price. Interesting news is that uh, recently he, invent, he invested 500 million uh, US dollars in a Brazilian bank. And why is it interesting? He's not a big fan of cryptocurrencies, but this new bank, Digital Bank in Brazil, recently bought a large crypto platform. So they have this really specific crypto. So there's some affinity that he's created for himself with this crypto market. So, I think it's always interesting to mention. I think you have a clear idea now of the main drivers of his portfolio. And that is what I think what is hot at this moment is that you can see that just by investing in regular stocks, you are mm -hmm. capable of getting really, really, really good results. Speaking about those cryptocurrencies, I had a look at a report mm -hmm. um, about what is now the exact value or what could be the value of cryptocurrency in an investment portfolio. Of course, we have the development within the payment world. Yeah, yeah. Of course, as an investor, you can also say, look, this is a development I want to invest in because I think it's something new, yeah, like uh, different than my shares. Yeah. But could it also be like a really um, yeah, sustainable part of an investment portfolio like bonds, shares, currencies, and uh, commodities, for right. example? Of course, we don't have too much information yet because yeah, it's no. a relatively a new development. Right. And uh, yeah, to... to uh, to say if it's uh, okay or not, you must know what is, for example, the correlation of a uh, investment with other kinds of investments. For example, bonds, shares, commodities. You know, people say, okay, I want to go, uh, I'm afraid for inflation, so I go into yeah. gold. Yeah. Well, and uh, we, we saw, for example, last year and also this week, mm -hmm. when the shares, the, comp the, the major indices of stocks went down, that actually also the cryptocurrency went down. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. really something yeah. that uh, yeah, is you can't say that it's a hedge yet. Not yet. On the other hand, I mean, not always every, uh, sometimes you see bonds and shares having exactly the same movement. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, bonds this week, for example, went a little bit up. So if you are really, of course, uh, convinced about cryptocurrency, yeah, you must invest in it, I suppose. Yeah? But if you are more neutral and you want to have from everything a little bit and to have diversification, mm. yeah, then you must know what is the relation. And it's not a clear answer yet. I mean, at this moment, it's still seen as like an alternative investment and that normally should not have more than one percent in a portfolio. So, but of course, if you think that's way uh, outdated and it should be 5%, you can do whatever you want. Of course, but in general, it should have a, a number, you know, a, part of an investment portfolio. Um, I don't know which it is, but at this moment it's seen as 1%. What's next? What's, What's next? next? Full week, I think. Uh, full week. Uh, we, of course, still are in the figure season. So Monday, we have Philips and uh, Mafre. Oh, no, Spanish. Yeah. Uh, Tuesday, Randstad, Basie, McDonald's and Endesa, also a Spanish one. Mm -hmm. And Wednesday, Facebook, Pfizer, interesting, Banco Santander in yeah. Spain again. And Thursday, Royal Dutch Shell, Amazon, Intel, Alphabet, InBev, ArcelorMittal. Friday, Exxon, Mobile, Procter & Gamble. For busy week. I think yes. everybody has one of those stocks. I think so, yeah. To be careful. Maybe directly or indirectly, but I think almost exactly. everybody has those. I took the main ones, but of course there are a lot of more figures, but these are a selection of the main companies. Exactly. Okay, well, if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up, and then uh, we we'll hope to see you next, uh, next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.